All righty, we're going live. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Are we live? We are live. We're here. How's it going, you guys? It's Bruce here, traveling with Bruce. Welcome to Wednesday Hump Day. Today is February the 28th, the last day of February. Can you believe it? The second month of the year, gone already. Unbelievable. Time is flying when you're having so much fun. I got to say, uh, hey, Charles, how you doing? I was just talking to Char Charles Jordan. We're just uh, texting back and forth about three, four minutes before I went on the air. He's telling me how lousy the weather is and what are you going to do? It's winter time. Can't help you there. Uh, you know, what are you going to do here in Creston, BC? I'm three miles north of the uh, Idaho border. And uh, today uh, we had a sunny day until 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Every time... Uh, uh, I'm getting ready for my live stream. The sun goes away behind a cloud and uh, it just gets cloudy. And uh, you can see this sort of yellow, golden looking face here. It's like I had a tan or something like that. Uh, I guess I don't have that pale look. So maybe, you know, I shouldn't complain. But uh, there isn't that serious shine over here and this darkness over here because the sun just went behind the clouds or the clouds came in front of the sun, one or the other. And, uh, but I got to say, we've had a melt fest today. Uh, we hit about 37, 38 degrees here with the sun beating down. We got six inches of snow last night, and I bet you half of it's gone. It's just fantastic. Uh, I'm not touching the shovel. I'm not doing the driveway. I'm letting the sun take care of it. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. Well, I'm not to go out of the house. So uh, what the hey? Uh, <laughs> winter weather, that time of year, and uh, you know you hope for a bit of a break and uh, take it when you get it, right? Welcome to Traveling with Bruce, my uh, YouTube channel, uh, my daily stream. Uh, just one today. I did two yesterday. I'm doing two tomorrow. Uh, as you folks know, you regulars, I do one. Uh, I do live streams Monday to Friday at uh, 5 o'clock Eastern time. Except for Tuesdays and Thursdays, I now throw in a second show, 8 o'clock in the evening. See how it's going to go for a few weeks. And, of course, Saturday at 2 o'clock Eastern, I always do a show as well. Show last night, both of them went great. Uh, I think the the audience last night we had just as much fun as, as we did five. I slept like a log last night. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Boy, did I sleep! Oh, that's hard work. Uh, but it was a lot of fun, and we had some great comments and uh, a lot of good questions from from my regulars and some newbies who came by. And that's what this show is all about, too. If you're brand new to cruising, you've never cruised before, you're trying to figure out what is this all about. Uh, what have I done? I'm thinking of going on a cruise. What have I done? It's all okay. It's all good. Uh, you've come to the right place to figure out what to do if you're a newbie. Um, we love newbies here. <laughs> what we do is, is, is you'll note the chat's just lighting up right now. My regulars are saying hi. They're telling me where they are, and what their high temperature is today, so they can make me jealous. Because, you know, what's it going to take to beat out Creston, B.C. for warmth? Nothing. Uh, but uh, what we do is we talk about cruise ships all the time. And uh, we talk about cruise vacations and deals and uh, packages and rumors that we hear and news and news announcements that are coming out and changes all the time. So if you're new to cruising and you've got a question, there's no dumb question. You ask me anything you want to know about a cruise, uh, I'll probably be able to answer, answer it. But if I can't, or if I don't quite answer it to the satisfaction of some of my existing viewers, they will pipe in with their own little opinions and uh, I'll read them to you uh, or, or you'll see them yourself. For those of you who are watching the show tonight, tomorrow, next week, a year from now in the year 2024, uh, I was 62 in, in, uh, 2000 and, uh, 2018 and I, I, I was well, but 2024, I don't know if I'm feeling as good as I am now, you know, I'm older, but I'm okay now. But anyway, if you're watching six years from now or five years from now, uh, the comments that are coming in, I generally, I read them. And uh, that way, those of you who are watching the show later know what the heck I'm talking about. Then why is he talking about this when he was just talking about that five minutes ago? Because a viewer piped in and came in with a comment and I read it and that's how we're doing it now. YouTube is making changes. Those of you who are YouTube files and uh, familiar with YouTube, and those of you who aren't, uh, YouTube came out with an announcement about two days ago. They are changing these live streams so that in the future, and I hope it's tonight or tomorrow or in the next few days, because I didn't notice it on my video yesterday, but going forward pretty shortly, um, if you're watching this video a year from now or in 2024, you're likely going to see the comments that people are typing right now on your uh, version of this video because this video is uploaded to my channel as a regular video it's in the library in my sort of video library going forward and uh, hopefully <clears throat> very shortly this youtube feature will kick in and uh, those of you who are watching a month from now a year from now five years from now will see the comments that i see and that i'm reading to you and then you'll be able to understand what you know what i'm up to
Uh, speaking of YouTube, uh, I started my channel in August 2017. This is February 2018 or the end of February 2018. I'm six and a half months into my quest of building a YouTube channel with a bit of a following. And uh, as of yesterday, I had 1,176 subscribers, which uh, has been an amazing run. Uh, two months ago, I was under 200 subscribers, and now we're almost six times, 600% larger. Uh, right now, I, just as I was going on here, I took a look, 1,186, 10 more than yesterday. Welcome 10 new subscribers to the channel in the last 24 hours. Uh, it varies. Sometimes I get 30 in a day. Sometimes I get 10, 15. It just it just varies. It's wonderful. You never know where they're coming from. Uh, I get a lot of pleasant comments, a lot of highs and lows, and people tell me they're new, and they tell me right away where they're from and what their temperature is today, which I think is great. And uh, I love to have you on board. I hope you're joining the live stream. I notice the live stream numbers are moving up every uh, couple of days. We go higher and higher with the number of people watching live and the number of people watching later. And uh, the view numbers for the live streams used to be in the uh, 100 range, 120 range. Now they're in the four to 600 range. We've had one live stream hit 10,000 views in a week. The brawl, the, uh, the on, on board fisticuffs in Australia, the carnival legend, uh, that was a big topic for all of us. And we covered that one for a few days and the numbers went nuts. Uh, but that was kind of an, an abnormal event and they're kind of back to normal now, but the viewers are coming in. Uh, on my YouTube channel, for those who of you who follow me regularly, uh, I am not monetized right now. I'm still demonetized and waiting like millions of other YouTubers to get back into the monetization program. And so uh, for the job that I do, this, this is my full-time job. I'm not being paid any money. I've been cut off from all ad revenue. The only source of income I have is from uh, my live streams. And it comes from the generosity of my viewers. And if they hit the dollar sign on the bottom of their uh, laptops or their phones, they actually can send a donation to yours truly, dollar, two, three, four, five, whatever they want. Uh, it's called Super Chat. Uh, I call it the tip jar. And I thank everyone that's already done this. Uh, a couple of you have done it more than once, which I'm rather surprised by i'm really humbled <laughs> but uh any donation you guys make to me makes up for the fact that i don't get advertising revenue i've been cut off and uh i've heard the uh, the time lag between when we got shut down on on um, feb 20 everyone did until we were all reinstated is this review they're doing uh it's mysterious nobody can talk about it nobody knows anything about it we're hearing two to four weeks uh, before we're all back up again, and I'm praying I'm not one of those four weekers uh, because that will run me, I don't know, hundreds, it'll be hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It is, is it a fortune? No, but it would have helped. And, uh, you know, what are you going to do? So, anyone sends me super chat, thank you very much in advance. I really do appreciate it. Oh, that's enough of the begging, enough of that. <laughs> let's talk to the folks who are watching, and I've got some topics to talk about today. And let's see who's here and where we're at. Okay, so I'm going to bring my phone right back to the beginning here. Uh, Charles Jordan and I have been talking back and forth. Charles, how are you? It's good to have you here again, buddy. Uh, he's telling me it doesn't matter uh, whether I spell yuck, Y-U-K, or Y-U-C-K. It's bad no matter how you slice it. Debbie Emanuel, one of my favorites. You're here. Uh, hi, Bruce. Storm coming through Northern California the next few days. So chilly in Chico. It's at 53 degrees, but you got a storm. I'm hoping getting a lot of uh, moisture, and I hope the moisture is widespread through most of California because, boy, does it need it. Uh, this is the time of year it should get it. Uh, so welcome back, Debbie. Bob Hollis, 50 degrees and raining in Atlanta. Yucky there, too. <laughs> Yucky with a KY ending. Yeah, exactly. Pamela Jordan. Hi, Bruce and everyone. George McCrower, 83 degrees Fahrenheit, partly sunny in the villages. Welcome back, George. Good to see you, buddy. Anna E.P. Aloha. Aloha from Honolulu. 80 and super breezy trade winds today. Uh, it does happen in, in uh, Hawaii. Welcome back, Anna. Um, Exolospo in Tokyo is here. Currently 6 degrees and rainy. This afternoon will be 20 and sunny. 20 in Tokyo. Yesterday it was 15, you were telling me. So you're now up to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Unbelievable. That is awesome stuff. Um, what did we got here? Soulful Music, 100. High Bruce, minus 3 Celsius in blizzard conditions here in Dublin, Ireland. The East from the Beast has landed in the UK, and you're getting it. Isn't that amazing? Uh, Scott Batchley, High Bruce, another nice day in Ventura, California. 59. 
but sunny before the next storm. Yeah, there's one coming. I've heard Heather Young, 50 in Kentucky and rainy, unfortunately. Sorry, Heather. Sorry. Sylvan Forrest, greetings, Bruce. We reached 82 degrees degrees of, of, of Fahrenheit today and with blazing sun all day. So here we are in the shade with our usual rum and coke and cigar. My wife thinks you are cute. Thank you so much. My wife has noticed this. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting such a kick out of it. I got some super chats coming. I'll be right there. Uh, my wife has said to me, you, you've got some fans. Uh, you get some fans, don't you? I said, well, yeah, I have 1,184 subscribers. No, 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 I don't mean that. You got some lady friends there. You got some uh, ladies that are that kind of, that they like. I said, well, what's not to like? Look at this. Uh, clean cut guy, uh, clean living guy uh smile all the time why are you hanging around and she kind of went well yeah that's true <laughs> but then she looked at me and said but yeah but you've been hanging around me too i said or have i not been able to get rid of you mm. no no it's the other way around i i, I definitely am. i'm the lucky one <laughs> uh thank you sylvan for that uh, from your wife thank you to mrs sylvan <laughs> mrs forrest how are you dear nice to have you here too uh peter heckema hi bruce another 86 degree day here in tarpon springs florida peter you are killing me with this weather this is our 22nd day of at least 10 degrees above normal which is 74. what's it going to be like this summer yeah uh worse right worse oh my goodness uh sylvan all right everyone show your appreciation by hitting that like button please just a suggestion i hope you are monetized again soon thank you sir and thanks for all your thumbs ups out there folks bob hollis you are wonderful sir Five dollar donation to my tip jar through uh, Super Chat, Bob. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, that's wonderful. Sherman Mercer, seventy seven degrees and mostly sunny in southeast Texas. Cruising tomorrow from Galveston, just a weekend getaway to Cozumel and back on Carnival Valor. Now, Sherman, I don't want to hear anything about fist fights and a drunk cruiser going out of control on this three day booze cruise. I want you behaving yourself. I want you to be on your best behavior uh, and. Just have a lot of fun and tell us how it went. <laughs> Ernest uh, Gringo, hi. I'm in Hialeah, Florida. It's going to hit in the upper 80s. Uh, Ernest, welcome back. Wonderful weather. Debbie Emanuel, uh, you've done it again. Uh, $5 contribution to my to my survival fund. Thank you very much again, uh, above and beyond what I ask. It's just wonderful of you. I can't thank you enough, enough, and enough. Thank you. So I think that's the third time you've sent me some money and I, I, I love you. I just love you. Um, my wife knows about you though. <laughs> Thank you again. Christine. Hey, Bruce, sunny and 60 in Michigan, 60 in Michigan. That's fantastic. That's a, what's it like in, uh, we want to hear if anyone's from Jersey today. Is there anyone watching from North Carolina, not Carolina, not North Carolina, but how about, uh, how about Rhode Island? What's going on in uh, Pennsylvania there? Uh, what about some other spots? How about Nova Scotia? We'll have to see if any of these folks are coming in. I know some of you folks went cruising, so some of our regulars aren't here. They're on cruise ships right now. Uh, I'll, 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 Ulani is here. <laughs> Ulani Cullum, 65-ish uh, in the Fort Worth area. Rain stop for now. 65 is okay for uh, the end of February. Uh, that's fantastic. Welcome back. Ulani, nice to have you here and uh, welcome all of you today to my uh, channel and uh, thanks for joining me. A couple of points that I was going to bring up today. I found some some uh, news uh, articles and then I found some other information. Stuff, Some of the stuff, like I read a lot of things about cruise ships all the time, but it doesn't turn me on so much. I don't pass it on to you guys. I, I hate to give you boring stuff, but uh, some of the stuff I think is kind of cool, kind of neat. <clears throat> I, um, excuse me, I just today uh and i kind of dug into it a little bit more it's about the luxury cruise ship business um you know we all we all know that we can go on uh um uh, hall in america and celebrity two very nice cruise lines uh, one uh, hall, uh, hall in america owned by carnival celebrity run by uh, royal caribbean um and those are like five to five and a half star kind of lines uh princess will be like a four and a half five star Nice, but not quite that upper end, but nice. Uh, I've been on two Princess Cruises, no complaints. Um, but then you've got that that, that next level uh, higher, uh, and that would be like um, uh, Regent uh, or, or Seaborn and a few others. And I was reading up today about the luxury cruise business, and then there are some of these boutique uh, 
this is what, kind of what I'm getting at. There are some boutique cruise lines out there that a lot of us just don't hear about very often. And I didn't know about these lines until really a few months ago when I really started doing this big time, full time to really dig into the cruise business because every day I'm bringing you, you know, material on the cruise lines and that's forcing me to dig harder to find more research, which I don't mind doing because I love doing it. And so I found some more information on some more cruise lines. Just quick say hi lows here to uh, Debbie Manuel. Would love to have dinner with you and your lovely bride on a group cruise. <laughs> Debbie, I'd love that. No question about it. Uh, my wife is, uh, she's starting to kind of, Start to kind of believe, uh, you know, I, I talked to her about doing this YouTube channel for a year. Uh, I mentioned it once in a while and uh -huh, she'd say, uh -huh. and uh, then I got more, you know, interested in it. And then with about three months to go before, you know, in the spring, uh, last spring, um, I was saying, I, I'm, I'm really thinking about doing a YouTube channel. Well, what would you talk about? So well, I'm not sure exactly, but I'm kind of narrowing it down. I have a background in finance, but I don't really want to do the stock market report every day. I don't want to really talk about the stock market. I have an interest in the sports, but I, I don't want to be a sports. I'm not a sports guy, like that, that kind of fanatical. And I thought, well, you know what I love doing? I mean, what do we really love to do? And uh, what we, we haven't done in going on cruises. I'd love to talk about uh, the trips we've done. And I, I wouldn't mind talking about cruising. So I started watching the youtube competition that i have out there in the cruise world who does cruise videos and what kind of videos are there and what kind of style and presentation do people have and how would i fit in and that type of thing and so that's how it came along but now lately uh, she's she of course she's excited as can be when i hit a thousand subscribers so she didn't think it would happen a week and a week or so before she thought oh my goodness you're too far gone you're not going to make it and then we made it and she was uh, this is fantastic and now 1186 subscribers and they're still coming and uh you know, it's coming around. And so she's kind of going, well, geez, uh, you think we're going to be on a cruise in not too distant future? I said, I don't think it's going to be all that long. I, it'll be before the end of the year, my hunch. Um, and then they'll be frequent after that. I would like to produce uh, videos on a number of different cruise lines and cruise ships in various locations around the planet. And so, you know, time is short and uh, it's, it's go time. And uh, I think the viewers will enjoy it. And uh, those some will join us. Sometimes they won't. And uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So she's getting kind of quietly getting interested in what I'm up, really up to here. So quite, quite good. So I love it. So Debbie, I am very much looking forward to that. Uh, uh, Sherman Mercer, uh, I went to the UFC fights in Austin, Texas a couple of weeks ago just to learn some defensive moves. <laughs> Look, Sherman, if you're thinking of going to Australia on a cruise, you know, there's a lot of action on some of these cruise ships down there. Uh, but, that, yeah, you know, maybe you'll get some practice. Uh. <laughs> oh, my. I, I, like I said to one of my viewers today, I'm a lover, not a fighter. And uh, I'm not much into the fight game. I'm, I'm more into the loving side. So, <laughs> Christine, laugh out loud, Sherman. Uh, Peter, uh, heck of a, my wife says you reminder of Don Cherry of uh, Hockey Night in Canada. All you need is a cover colorful jacket. Uh, what well, I don't know if to say thank you or not. I've always thought I was more of a Don, a Don McLean type <laughs> sidekick, but uh, love Don Cherry and love the show. Uh, those Amer those of you Americans down there and foreigners, uh, I keep forgetting it's not just a USA audience. Majority of my audience is in America, but uh, uh, about twenty eight percent of you are everywhere else. Uh, Don Cherry is a, a hockey commentator um, and who uh, was once an NHL coach, flamboyant gentleman, uh, very, very uh, um, uh, loyal to uh, uh, Canadian military, uh, loves the Canadian military history. Uh, whenever a member of the armed forces dies, he pays tribute to them on one of his broadcasts. It's kind of come a tradition. Uh, and uh, he's uh, fanatical about the Boston Bruins because he coached them. Uh, loves Bobby Orr because he coached Bobby Orr. And uh, he wears these high collar shirts. And if you ever seen them, uh, they're they're like way up here, like they're they're like this, they're they're like this high. These high collar. So he's got to sit straight up, and he's got the tie on, and he's got these flamboyant colored jackets. I mean, if you with the HD televisions now. <laughs> <laughs> Those jackets really stand out. So I know what your wife's saying, but I'm not wearing that. <laughs> you notice I got the open collar. I wore a tie for a living for a long time. And uh, those ties, uh, I've put them away. I don't know how many I have left. Uh, I've really eliminated ties from my life. And the suits, they're gone. Uh, maybe I have a jacket left. Uh, yeah, I'm don't miss it at all. Like, don't miss it at all. So there you go. 
<laughs> Peter, love your comment. Okay, back to these cruise lines, these luxury cruise lines. Let me read to you the luxury cruise lines that are out there. These are some of the top lines. Some of you might know, some of you might not. Like, for instance, I've mentioned this line before, Ponant, P-O-N-A-N-T, Ponant. They're from France. And I think in, in France, you'll pronounce it Ponant. You won't even mention the T. Uh, they're famous for uh, yachts. Uh, that gi giant, they're giant yachts. They'll hold 110 passengers, that that size, 65 crew, 100, you know, 10 passengers. Very expensive. Um, Regent, uh, which is owned by um, Norwegian, thank you, and Seaborn, which is owned by Carnival. Uh, these are uh, five and six star, six star lines. Crystal uh, Cruises, Silver Seas, uh, Oceana. Uh, also owned by um, Norwegian, I believe. Um, Paul Gauguin Cruises, they have one ship. Um, Sega, who the hell Sega? S-A-G-A, -A. who is that? They have uh, 50 plus uh, as their as their cruising uh, cruising audience, 50 and over, that's it. You're 49, get off the boat, can't get on. Uh, sea Dream Yachts is another cruise line. Uh, Star Clippers, they're famous for those giant, um, Sail sh sailboats, you know, the ones we see, they have motors as well, but they have those wonderful uh, sails, those, those huge, uh, huge sailboats. Viking cruises, I've thrown in there because I think they're of a, of a luxury uh, version. Windstar and uh, Voyages to Antiquity. How about that name for a cruise line? Voyages to Antiquity. And their spiel is simply um, when you come on one of their ships, you're surrounded in luxury, of course, it's first, first grade. Uh, but they'll have guest lecturers on who are like uh, historians, professors, who are experts in Greek mythology or Roman history or uh, Turkish, uh, you know, history going back thousands of years. And uh, when you're on one of those ships and you land at a, uh, a former Roman uh, trading port that, you know, was active in uh, 300 BC, you'll have someone on that ship who's an expert in that exact area. And they'll tell you everything you never thought possible to know. And for those who are real buffs about this kind of history, uh, Voyages to Antiquity is a cruise line for you. And uh, bring your wallet and make sure your credit card's got a lot of room on it because uh, you're going to be paying. But it's nice, apparently. Now, coming uh, shortly, uh, Ritz-Carlton. They're coming into the cruise game, and they're not going to be cheap. They're going to be six-star. And it'll be interesting to see how those prices shake out. And then I threw in Virgin Cruises with, Paul, with uh, Branson, uh, Richard Branson's cruise company. Um, they're building a ship now. I don't know uh, well, whether or not it will be a luxury line, whether it'll be a um, sort of a high middle class uh, uh, younger set. Are they going for like the 30, late 30s, 40s and 50s crowd uh, with, you know, a lot of action on shore activities, but, you know, for 40 and 50 year olds. Uh, rather than going after the retirees uh, who are, you know, no children on the boat um, or no one under 50, obviously. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how Virgin comes out with those. We'll know. Eventually we'll know. Anyway, these cruise lines right now, other than uh, Virgin and Ritz-Carlton, uh, they now have 40 ships in their fleet, and they have 25 on order right now and to be delivered within the next four to five years, like every year between now and five years from now. Probably eight of them are coming out. And so there'll be 25, 65 in, in total, excuse me, 65 in total. And um, I wouldn't be surprised by the time the 65th arrives, there'll be another 20 on order behind it or even more. Uh, this area is growing dramatically. And I think they're going after me, <laughs> my age group. I'm 62. Uh, they're they're after the, going after the 52-year-olds uh, because they're thinking over the next 15 years uh, between, say, 50 to between the age of 50 and 75, they're going after those individuals who are long past children or into grandchildren, maybe even to great grandchildren. And they're looking for those who are, uh, you know, retired and uh, got a pension and can afford this kind of luxury and are looking for an escape um, on a high end cruise line. And uh, they're here to provide it. Um, the trick of it, though, is that these cruise lines are in a bit of a I would say this, if the economy were to falter at all, they might be in a pickle because these kinds of ships are what we call all-inclusives. These vessels, generally speaking, run the way all ocean liners used to run if you were a first-class passenger. 
everything was paid for. Everything was covered. You had no extra charges to speak of unless you ordered Dom Perignon 1954 or something like that. Or you bought a cigar in the shop, uh, yeah, because there are smokers and non-smokers. Um, but um, the meals would have been all, you know, four course, five course dinners. Uh, you would have had you know, the best of linens, the best of of, of uh, service, uh, the best trained, uh, you know, hotel staff and uh, housekeeping staff. I mean, it would just be impeccable. The furniture in your room would be the top notch. Uh, the carpeting would be lush. You know, if there is carpeting, it'd be lush. Uh, the curtains, the bedding, the mattress, all this sort of stuff. So these cruise lines, they got a problem. And the problem is that if there's a recession going on and uh, Carnival and um, uh, Royal Caribbean and Norwegian with all their subsidiary lines, except their high-end lines, but they're, they're mediocre, the mediocre lines, the, the, the regular lines, the big cruise company, they can drop prices. Uh, Carnival and, and Royal Caribbean, they can drop 100 bucks a room across the board right now. They can hand out $100 room credits first. They won't reduce the fare. They'll, they'll offer room credits. Then they'll drop the fare. Or then they'll do both. They'll start offering $150 room credit, free drink package, or uh, you know, uh, one specialty restaurant uh, uh, per week or two per week, and we'll drop the, crew, the fare by 50 bucks. I mean, they'll come up with all kinds of angles to get you on that ship and try to get you to spend. These luxury liners, they're all inclusive. They have nothing to cut. <laughs> they, they, they don't charge you extra for the especially restaurant on board because it's included in your fare now. They don't charge extra for that high-end furniture. It's already included. So you they don't have anywhere to ask you for more money. And so if they're down 10% on bookings, they're in trouble because they've got 10 empty rooms. They can't sell those last rooms for 99 bucks a night. They can't do it. They're not going to do it. They'll run them empty. And this is a, an issue where these high-end lines have to keep that that uh, ambiance on board. They can't have guys like me hanging around going, oh, this is that a great cruise. I'm on a six-star line. And I'm used to the carnival ship. You can't have me on that cruise ship. No, I'm the wrong guy. They want passengers who are used to paying 1000 a night, 800 a night, times two, $1,600 a night. Uh, and those guests get surrounded by the lower end and it's uh, out of control, uh, they're going to have even more vacancies. So they actually have to cut back uh, their their capacities and how they do it, I don't know. And so there's a, there's a break-even line that they're in trouble. Uh, might be 80%, might be 78%. I, I don't know the actual number. Uh, they may run losses for a couple of years before they get the, uh, when the economy comes back. Not trying to insult anybody, by the way. I'm not trying to be uh, judgmental of people, but uh, you know, the unemployed don't go on six-star cruise lines <laughs> ever, <laughs> and the cruise line will never be cheap enough for uh, a twenty-five thousand dollar a year employee to afford. It's not going to happen, and uh, that's how these guys roll. So, sixty-five ships will be plying the seas shortly, and. Um, I bet you there'll be a few more behind them behind that. So it's going to be quite interesting to see how this uh, plays out. Comments coming in. Uh, my phone is just going crazy here. Uh, let's see what's going on. Al Aluna, uh, U Ulani, <laughs> I keep doing that. Sorry. Ulani is saying, we've been looking at Regent because they have a two-for-one deal. No nickel and diming. Just pay it, uh, pay it all once. Expensive, but the price seems to include airfare, which would be good for an Alaska cruise. Yeah, that's about the best you're going to get there. And uh, to be fair to Regent, um, uh, and, and and this argument I was just making about the high end, Regent just makes the cut because in the uh, in the uh, Norwegian cruise line uh, hierarchy, um, uh, Regent is uh, number two, I think, and then Oceana number th number three. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but if you can get a deal like that you take that deal and you will really enjoy it. And I would love to hear from you how it worked out because that, that uh, would be fantastic. Sharon at sea is saying, hi, we have had a weather change here in Arizona and we may actually have a couple of weeks of winter. Get out of town. That's aren't there laws, state laws in Arizona that forbid that kind of weather from coming in with all the Canadians down there and all the holidays from Northern U S. Um, I didn't think they would allow that. Uh, this, uh, this is unfortunate, <laughs> but it can happen, can't it? We know. Uh, yep, I've been in Arizona when it's been cool. Ernest Gringo, uh, to me, uh, Hall in America is number one, hands down. People my age group, 
everything nice and calm. Uh, we and us seniors are lots of fun. You meet lots of great people. Yes, you do. And Hall America has a reputation, uh, a very high reputation uh, for good reason. But it's not a six star, ultra exclusive line. Um, but it's it's at the top of the grade when it comes to all the other cruise lines. A celebrity, I would put right with it. Uh, they're right there. And then just below that, I would be putting Princess. Uh, and then uh, so then I would look at, for instance. If you're on a on a Norwegian cruise ship, and you're in the 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 Haven Club, that's the upper end of the Norwegian uh, cruise line. So you're on the upper suites up there. You're now in um, uh, you're now in Holland America or higher territory, and you're kind of just inching up to the luxury territory, just touching it. But down below you, five decks are the rest of us. <laughs> now on uh, on uh, MSC on MSC, they have the yacht club. And uh, that's also a higher grade. And I've not heard complaints, not even on the seaside. I have not heard complaints really on the seaside, other than some elevator issues about the Yacht Club. Uh, because the service is great. The, the, the accommodations are great. Uh, the food up there is apparently quite good. You know. But again, it's, it's a select few uh, numbers of uh, passengers. It's not, not everyone. Now, on Princess, they also have a... Um, a higher end grade uh, a gradient of rooms uh, as well. And they have an exclusive area on the um, top deck of the Princess ship. I know on the Princess Ruby that I was on, uh, the very front top deck of the Princess uh, cruise, there was an exclusive area for members, certain members of the um, higher end. And again, that that's approaching, you know, Hall in America and a little higher than that, but you're not hitting Seabourn. You're not yet getting to Crystal, anything like that. You don't have, a, you don't have your own butler yet you're close but you're not there but if you're spending that kind of money if you're going to spend say 500 a night per person um you can do it on a on a norwegian cruise ship of course uh you might get a larger room obviously but uh you are also spending the kind of money that can get you onto a six-star cruise line with the 350 passengers instead of uh 4, now if you love the crowds or you're doing a multi-generational cruise uh grandma and grandpa are on the upstairs in that nice suite mom and dad and the kids are in a balcony unit on the same ship then it's great it works for everybody and the kids can't go on that six star line so here's where grandma and grandpa have the comfort the peace and quiet get the kids when they want them and when they don't they don't have to have them and then mom and dad uh, are on a ship with with balconies and great food and great company and it's all good the kids of course are having a blast of course um, Ernest, uh, Gringo, uh, just talked to me about Hall America. So going to Kathy Butler. Hey, Kathy, how are you? Seaborn looks amazing. It is a nice line. Uh, welcome back, Kathy. Sharon at sea. Uh, I just booked a client on Hall America and hopefully never have to deal with them again. Horrible customer service and misinformative. I am sorry that you had that happen to you, Sharon. I'm surprised at that, but, uh, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a travel agent, so I don't get to get to, you know, the behind the scenes stuff in that area. Uh, I can only talk to you about uh, the Holland America experience on the ship, which to me was wonderful. Uh, friends of mine have cruised to Holland America numerous times, and they just haven't got a bad word to say about them. Uh, but they have noticed declines in quality across the board everywhere else. Uh, they've noticed uh, lower quality of food and offerings. I think we've talked about this with my group here about how dining rooms uh, in the last 10, 15 years they're not four course uh, five star dining anymore they're now uh, sort of four star three and a half star um you know try to get try to get a uh, prime rib uh and lobster tails and uh you know porterhouse steak in the dining room that, that's gone you're now in the specialty restaurant now i'm not saying hall america offers porterhouse, porterhouse steaks either but um i've heard better things about hall in america than anywhere else in the general cruise line area okay just mention that at that uh welcome sharon at sea by the way welcome um uh, what do you got ernest gringo and the piano bar is me and my wife's favorite so much fun <laughs> yeah that can make the time go by pretty good ernest uh kathy butler yay bob and debbie for super chat donations yes uh, kathy you betcha thank you you guys again i really appreciate it uh sharon no way holland america is the best on the sea sharon says no way holland america is the best at the sea oh uh d martin is here how about a little how about a blue collar cruise line for working folks <laughs> where you could travel without selling off all your assets 
I'm going into catastrophic debt. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. You know, uh, my friend, uh, that's a tough one uh, because um, uh, I will say this. There are some great, great valued cruises out there if you know where to look and if you're prepared to shop around. And as I mentioned to you folks, uh, my one of my favorite websites is vacationstogo.com. I love going there to, uh, to scour deals. Uh, the blue collar pricing that you're after, it might be a repositioning cruise. You might have to look at a repositioning cruise. On the other hand, if you took a repositioning cruise, and it, I'm not talking about a 15 day from Miami all the way to Southampton in England, I'm thinking maybe a, a four or five day repositioning cruise. Maybe it's uh, oh, Los Angeles to Seattle. Uh, you know, They're moving it from the Mexican Riviera area up to get ready for Alaska cruises. You might get a cruise for two or 300 bucks. Uh, Carnival's famous for cruises under three, four hundred dollars for for a two, well, three, four, five day type cruise. But if you're looking around, say at, um, oh, how about the week after Thanksgiving or the, the, the first two weeks in December or the first two or three weeks in January, you take a look at some of these cruises in the Caribbean, you'll find some some great deals. I mean, really good deals for a week long cruise uh, in the Caribbean. And it could be on Princess. It could be on uh, Hall of America. It could be on Royal Caribbean. Uh, you just have to search, search it out. Uh, I'm telling you, there, there are deals there for a lot of income groups. And you're not on a uh, working man's cruise ship. You're on a, you're on a four-star, five-star cruise line. Nice. That's a nice treat, and you deserve it. You work hard for it. You should, you should get it. Now, you want a deal at Christmas or New Year's uh, on a six-star cruise line? Get in line because we all do. They don't exist. There are too many buyers, not enough, not enough cabins. Uh, but um, uh, you look around and you get a travel agent that does, does, does some homework for you. You'll find a travel agent that will then come to you and say, I got something for you, Mr. Martin. I got a deal here. Uh, or Mrs. Martin, whoever's talking to me. Uh, yeah, just just look. Kathy Butler, D. Martin, I think that's Carnival. Uh, D. Martin laughing out loud. Uh, Kay Butler, Kathy saying, but then they nickel and dime you to death. That can be the case. Um, Kathy saying, we should do a cruise challenge. Who can get through a cheap cruise with no extra charges or packages? It would have to be a short three-day laugh out loud. Uh, I have a friend of mine who's, who wins that battle every time. I got a buddy of mine who uh, he's a master at uh, cruising um, and coming out the end of the uh, cruise, Thirty-five dollar charge on the room on the room bill, unbelievable! And have a great time. They have a great time. They they don't they don't cut. They don't feel they're missing anything. See all the shows. Uh, eat well. Travel well. They're experts. It can be done, folks. Can be done. Uh, we just gotta watch that casino. <laughs> and, and don't and don't be don't be trying to fool me. Uh, where you say, oh, I had fifteen hundred dollars in room charges. It was terrible. Yeah, yeah, eight hundred. It was the slot machine because you put that card in the slot machine and you charge it up and then 700 was everything else that you and your wife spent on and you're telling me you spent fifteen hundred dollars in room charges hey, i know i know what happened yeah those lucky sevens didn't come up did they uh, those luck those wild symbols they never show up <laughs> i'm speaking from experience baby hey. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got here? Uh, Sherman saying, I consider Carnival to be the blue collar line. Lots of fun, and we never have a problem, uh, D. Martin. Uh, Sharon at Sea is saying, Ernest Gringo, I work with all the cruise lines, and over the phone, Hall America has the rudest customer service. They may be awesome on the ships, but not over the phone. Well, you know, they need improvement there. I get you that. Um, I'd love to, uh, you know, if you're ever at one of these conventions, uh, Sharon, and you're ever able, ever able to meet a uh, Hall America rep, give it to them and give it to them good uh or you know send an email to the vice president of marketing and just make it known you're not happy uh i don't know uh bob hollis carnival liberty just uh, just did it in november uh fantastic uh dean martin my general theory is that any vacation you go on where you have to constantly be depressed about the cost is not a vacation i uh, agree uh yeah you don't want to you don't want to be doing that uh, uh, Ernest Gringo, I've never been on Carnival. I'm uh, I'm in South Florida, but I've got uh, lots of friends uh, who have been on Carnival. Uh, if you want young party drunken time, Carnival is for you, not for me. Laugh out loud. <laughs> yeah, short short cruises, the real shorties, like the three four days and the ones at spring break. Luck out, uh, all bets are off. Uh, you're on a booze cruise and you're going to be surrounded by uh, college students having a good old time. 
but a week long cruise on Carnival, uh, going to their to their private uh, key, uh, and uh, maybe a stop in uh, Cayman Islands, perhaps a stop in uh, San Martin or, or Saint Thomas, should be a good time. Should be a very good time. Uh, and very pleasant, uh, very enjoyable. Uh, Kathy Butler, have a wonderful cruise, Sherman. Uh, Kelly Sianovich is here. Canton, Ohio is 64, partly sunny. We'll take that, Kelly. Take that all day long for sure. Sean Johnson learned, uh, jo Sean Johnson saying, learned about a surprise uh, Easter family cruise leaving April 1st from Galveston aboard Liberty of the Seas. Uh, just booked today, headed to Mexico, Jamaica, and Grand Cayman, your old stomping ground. That is my old stomping ground. I used to live there. That uh, That is going to be, I, I hope, a very good cruise for you. Uh, should be a lot of fun. Um, and uh, Jamaica, Grand Cayman, yeah, yeah, that's going to be super. If you haven't been to Cayman, you'll have a good time there. I'm sure of it. Uh, but just get to your tender early. <laughs> get on that island and just go. Um, yeah, take a look on the internet for uh, shore excursions on the uh, on uh, Grand Cayman. Um, you might be able to book one yourself privately, but otherwise, you can always go through the cruise line and see what they're offering you. You can do some comparison shopping, that type of thing. Uh, Dean Martin, how much can I get for one of my kidneys? <laughs> uh, Dean, uh, uh, Dean Martin, the question is this: How many booze cruises have you been on, <laughs> and what's the shape of that kidney? <laughs> Oh man, Debbie was number 25 to thumbs up. Oh, fantastic. We got 25 thumbs up. Thanks you guys. All you guys who are watching, if you if you want to give me a thumbs up today, that would be great. We hit 60 yesterday on the on the five o'clock show. Fantastic numbers of thumbs ups. And uh that really helps the uh the uh YouTube uh, algorithms for for my channel to kind of get noticed. So if any one of you uh, wish wish and could kindly give me a thumbs up, please hit them. And let's run that total up. That would be fantastic. And also, thanks again to the uh, to the two of you today who've sent me super chat uh, donations. Thank you very much for that. The dollar sign on the bottom there is your is your way of sending me a a little contribution. I'm not getting paid right now. YouTube has cut us off. We're demonetized until we're back, and we are waiting. It's day eight and counting. No income coming in other than super chat donations. So thanks for the ones I've gotten today already. Thank you. Uh, what do we got? Steaming bean. Um, uh, <laughs> Steamy Bean is saying, Carnival is the closest line being blue collared and tempted to use one. <laughs> and then uh, 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 Ulani is saying, Hey, Sharon at sea, I watch you too. There you go. There you go. Uh, Dean D. Martin says, Thanks. Uh, Kathy Butler, Sean, that sounds like a wonderful Easter cruise. Uh, should, be, should be nice. You're heading to the Cayman's in Jamaica. Uh, I wonder, are you going to be at Oco Rios or, um, or, or do they have a private K there? I'm not exactly sure. Let me know. Um, Ernest, uh, hey guys, let's give Bruce a hand and help him with thumbs ups. And please, if you can donate, let's keep him on. We all know he's really a good guy. <laughs> You're too kind. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Kathy Butler. Yes, Bruce, the casino gets me as well. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Sean Johnson, K Butler. I think that it will be a fantastic time. Great prices available for balcony staterooms. Made the decision a no-brainer. There you go. Like I say, sometimes you can find deals, deals, deals. Uh, the Steaming Bean is saying, my first cruise had me owing nothing after. Way to go. Steaming Bean, zero degrees, degree, zero degrees today in Sandy Bay, Saskatchewan. Yippee! Uh, I'm assuming that's zero Celsius, which would be 32 Fahrenheit. That is uh, pretty good for way up there because this guy's north, folks. He's north. He's up there. Uh, Debbie is saying, I'm watching a documentary on YouTube right now about passengers videotaping all their experiences on the Concordia, including it sinking. Uh, yeah, there, there were quite a number of videos that were issued uh, right after that uh, incident, uh, what, about four or five years ago now? Just time flies. It's amazing how long this has been. And uh, a lot of folks were, were videotaping with their, with their, you know, versions of smartphones that they had at the time. They're, I guess it would have been the Apple IV. The Apple, maybe the Apple Five, but the Apple Four, and Apple Three, and there were people who were videotaping, or you know, and we saw that I saw the same videotape again and again. Every newscast, the same and same and same. But um, some of the uh, reports after the recovery of that ship, how they salvaged it, were able to get it to come back up like this, upright, and then move it off to the uh, shipyard in Italy where they sliced it up, they cut it to shreds and recycled all the seal and stuff. There's nothing left of that ship. It's all gone. That was quite an amazing logistical feat and a $100 million bill, at least unbelievable. Uh, insurance covered a lot of that. 
Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Nikki is saying, out, laugh out loud. Is a 14-day cruise crazy for first-timers? Oh, well, should, uh, it should be fun, right? Uh, <laughs> oh, Nikki. Um, okay, let's, let's say that. I get this asked all the time. You know, what's the perfect length for a cruise? What's the best cruise line to go on for the first ever cruise? There really is no wrong answer. There's really no right answer. There's a myriad of answers. And um, if your first cruise is a 14-day cruise, it could be the most memorable cruise you'll ever have for the best of reasons or the worst of reasons or both. It all depends on the weather and it depends on the port stops and it depends on the company you're with and it depends on your neighbors and it depends on the staff. But, you know, depending on the cruise line and depending on your destinations, um, you may find that as a newbie, uh, you're going to be so overwhelmed with what's going on on this cruise ship that, you know, all the, the amenities you have and uh, all the restaurants available, all the choices you've got, uh, you just won't get it all done in 14 days. I mean, you'll, you'll get off that ship and go, I still haven't seen all of it. It's so big. It's so unbelievable. And hopefully you'll have that kind of an experience and uh, take lots of videos, take lots of pictures so to remember it by. Uh, but I'll tell you what to, to do in the meantime. Watch YouTube videos right now about that ship. Look, uh, do search uh, searches on YouTube. Type in the name of that ship. Do you know your cabin number? Type in the name of the, the, the number, your cabin number, and the name of the ship in a YouTube search. You may find that someone has done a video before of that actual room. And then you, you can see what your room looks like. Now, you may find that you're on, say, the, uh, oh, I don't know, you're, you're on a, on deck 15 or, or whatever the name of the deck is. There might be a name for the deck. Um, enter the name of the deck or the deck number and your cabin number or balcony cabin or what kind of cabin you have. And then you may find a similar room that's only a few down from you, three or four rooms, five rooms away from where your room actually is. And that way you'll get a view of what the inside of one of your cabins actually looks like before you even get there. And that's how you do the pre-cruise intelligence that I mentioned for you. And then you can look up the restaurants on board that ship. You can look up the spa. You can look up the showroom. There's all kinds of videos that people have posted. Some people will do a five, 10 minute video of the tour. They'll walk around the ship and they'll edit it and you'll see all kinds of parts of the ship. Do that now, and you'll have an idea what your ship looks like before you even get on it, and that might help you uh, ease into it a little bit more. Sean Johnson saying, any insider tips for what to do while visiting Grand Cayman? Yeah, I, uh, I would say um, uh, Stingray City if you, is an idea, or if you like snorkeling in general, you may want to take uh, Captain Marvin. Uh, look up Captain Marvin on the Internet. See if he's still around. Um, He'll, he'll have a ship that'll hold, his boat holds about 15, 20 people, and he does private charters. And they'll do three stops uh, for your snorkeling. Uh, they'll, do, uh, they'll do one where you're in about 15 feet of water, and you think, you'll swear you're in an aquarium, but just at the top of it. And then you'll, you'll do one near the coral reef, uh, to, to just to, uh, at the edge of sea there. You'll see some fantastic uh, coral reefs and, and wildlife there, again, in the water. And then to the uh, Stingray City area. And you'll be in like three, four feet of water, uh, depending on the tides and the waves. And uh, you'll do that for a little while. And the whole cruise is so about three, three and a half hours. Uh, they may offer various lengths. So I, I just recommend you check it out. Captain Marvin's the Cayman Islands. Check it out and see if you can uh, find, a, find a deal there. Uh, Sharon at sea saying hi. Oh, Looney. Uh, we will be cruising again in a week. Uh, Sharon, you're killing me. <laughs> I'll catch up to you, Sharon. I will catch up to you. Uh, Chevy in first. Just joining. Why did you get cut off? Uh, why did I get cut off? Oh, you're talking about monetization. Oh, okay, okay. Um, uh, quickly, quickly. Uh, we we uh, were told by YouTube uh, on January the 17th that uh, if you have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 minutes of watch time, you're monetized. Uh, those who aren't have until the 20th of February to get there. And then they will be, apparently, we thought then we'd be monetized and everything would be well. No. I was at 225 subscribers, and I had about 3,000 hours of watch time instead of 4,000 hours. Uh, on the 20th or 19th of February, I had 11,000 hours of watch time and 1,050 subscribers. And I found out on the 20th that you're demonetized. But the good news is you've made those two levels, and now your channel is under review. Well, great. I'm under review. And I was hoping that would be a couple of days. Then I was hoping it would be maybe like maybe a week. Now we're hearing 
two to four weeks before we're back up. So I think I am a, among a million other channels that are in the exact same boat because we all put the boots to the to the sidewalk and worked our butts off to get over these these levels with the 30 day window, uh, only to find out that we're all demonetized and we have no idea when we're coming back and they won't tell us exactly when because they're YouTube and we don't know how it's being done. Is it being done manually? It's being done with artificial intelligence? No idea. So at the moment, for eight days now, no income, uh, and I don't know how much longer I have to go. So the only income I have is Super Chat, which we call the tip jar. And uh, if you hit the dollar sign and you can send me a dollar or two bucks or three bucks or five bucks or ten or whatever you want, uh, it's the only income I've got. And I've had a few people today send me some, and I say thank you, and a couple yesterday and a couple the day before. And it just kind of helps to compensate for the lack of advertising revenue, but that's the way it is. So that's why Chevy and First, that's what's going on. Sean Johnson, Falmouth, Jamaica, is uh, the uh, is the uh, port, uh, the private K for Carnival. I think that's what you're telling me. Uh, Randy Lucas, greetings from Paradise, California, with a high of 47 degrees and cloudy. Enjoyed the later live feed yesterday. Glad you did. Uh, we did the one at five, and we did the one at eight, and uh, they gave me three hours of uh, <laughs> of on air time yesterday. Whoa. That's my first. I'm doing it again tomorrow. Five and eight tomorrow. Here we go. Kathy Butler, I am also worried about 14 days being too long, but maybe. Uh, Kathy Butler, Europe would be worth 14 days. Oh, yeah. Look, if you're if you're going 14 days on a repositioning cruise and you're going from Florida to Europe, do it. Uh, and if it's your first cruise, do it. And, uh, yeah, you'll be there. No jet lag when you get there. Uh, should be fine. Steaming Bean, hoping for two-week cruises during the summer. Ah. Uh, you, well, I uh, don't know. Well, I mean, there are two week there are two week long cruises year round, uh, but uh, but uh, in a in a price range, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, Sharon at sea is saying, uh, Sean Johnson, uh, swing with stingrays or just hanging out on Seven Mile Beach are two things to check out in Grand Cayman. She's right. Uh, you can just take a taxi to the beach there. Exactly. Uh, you you get off that uh, tender. And uh, you just walk past all the screaming tour operators, <laughs> the organizers, who are trying to round up their 50 passengers to get them on that bus. Um, grab a private cab just over there. And if you can travel with another couple uh, that you meet on the ship, uh, split a cab between the four of you. Grab one of those van taxis, head up to Seven Mile Beach and hang out there. Or I'll tell you what, I wanted to take a van taxi, get on the island around 10 in the morning, and uh, tell the van taxi to take you to Foster's. Foster's Food Fair, that's the grocery store, just north of Seven Mile Beach. Go there first, walk on in there, tell the cab to come back in 10 minutes for another fair. Uh, go on in there and do some shopping, <laughs> grocery shopping, buy some, some snacks. They have a snack bar in there. Uh, it's a salad bar that they've got, and you pay by the gram. It's like every 100 grams, it's so much money. And a great selection of, of uh, food. You, you grab, you know, some, some pieces of uh, watermelon and some uh, honeydew and... Uh, strawberries and what, what they have and you load up a couple of plastic plates of that pay for that grab some soft drinks or 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 uh, alcohol if you want uh, there's an alcohol sh shop right across the uh, the parking lot from foster's food fair you can go in there buy some jamaican rum or whatever you want tartuga tartuga rum uh grab some cayman islands um uh rum cake so tartuga rum cake at Foster's, so you can pay the Foster's grocery store price with the locals pay, then get back in that cab, 10, 15 minutes later, the cab will be there hopefully, then take this, go to Seven Mile Beach, and hang out at Seven Mile Beach for uh, four hours or so, until about two in the afternoon or something like that. You got your, got your fresh fruits, you got your snacks, you got your drinks, buy a bag of ice, so you got some ice, and uh, you're good to go. And then grab a cab, or tell the cab, be here at two o'clock, take us back or whatever whatever works you got if one of you have a cell phone you'll be fine and then take the uh, taxi back down to the uh to the terminal and get on a tender and get back on the ship and what did you spend on that whole deal if you guys spent 60 80 bucks between you what well, the four of you you'll be lucky to spend that much money now you didn't do stingray city you just did seven mile beach but who cares there's cabanas there and they got the showers there you got bathrooms there it's great and uh, you can do that that's a great a great day. Again, weather dependent, of course. If it's pouring rain in the old Cayman Islands, and it can rain, uh, you may want to just stay on the ship. <laughs> on the other hand, go downtown, hang out downtown, hit a coffee shop, look around, do a little walking. But uh, 
you know, it's a quaint place, but it's going to be hectic because if there are six other cruise ships there, when yours is there, 15,000 people are going to be crawling on that island everywhere else. So that's why you may want to just grab a cab and take off to Seven Mile Beach and uh, check it out. But go online, check out some videos of what people do on the Cayman Islands, and you'll see for yourself uh, lots to do up there. Uh, Jenny Miller saying 14 days for a first cruise is long. Go for a balcony, seven days. Yeah, uh, you know, I would recommend a seven-day cruise as a first cruise, not a three-day booze cruise. Uh, but if you've got a, if, if you're booked on a 14-day repositioning cruise as your first cruise, then you're booked on a 14-day cruise and you're gone. Uh, Kathy Butler said, I like the turtle farm. Yeah, if you've got kids, it's perfect. You have children with you, perfect place to go for a visit, the, the turtle farm. Uh, Ernest Gringo, uh, me and my wife enjoy the inside cabin. Uh, first, it's colder. Second, it's pitch dark. It's all what we need. Uh, you know, Ernest, if that works for you, uh, great. Uh, he says, uh, he says, get those thumbs up, everybody. Um, if that works for you, fantastic. Um, my wife and I, uh, we love the balcony. Uh, looks like I have 42 thumbs ups now. Fantastic, you guys. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, I love the balcony. Um, I'll pay extra for it. Uh, I just love in the morning uh, when I'm waking up, I got my eye drops in my eyes and then I head over to the curtain <laughs> and I, I open the curtain just a little, just, just a little, because I don't want to disturb my wife. She's still sleeping over there. And uh, the bright sunshine is coming in and, and my eyes immediately close and I'm going, oh, and I slowly open my eyes and I see, where are we? And if we're in port, of course, we're, you know, we're in port, so I can see what the view looks like. And if it's Cabo San Lucas, you've got a beautiful view from your, well, depending on what direction you're looking. And if you're in the Cayman Islands, you know, you're looking south or you're looking on the north side of the island, you're looking out. But if you're at sea, uh, you're just looking at the ocean and you're just wondering, what's the weather like today? Are we sunny day on the ocean or are we a cloudy day on the ocean? And uh, once in a while, if you're steaming back to Los Angeles from, uh, from uh, Cabo or from Puerto Vallarta on a two-day sail back there are times where you're looking out the cruise your window and you see another cruise ship way over there there's the carnival uh cruise ship heading back to los angeles or long beach and we're going together as a tandem and uh, we're about three miles apart four miles apart from each other and you can look out way over there bring your binoculars when you go on a cruise people uh, as another tip for you bring binoculars because you can't believe how often you use them uh either on shore at the port at sea it's amazing. You want to see uh, the whales uh, breach? You got to have binoculars. And I can tell you how many times, I can't tell you how many times I've uh, been on a cruise ship where I've seen activity on the water that other people miss because they don't have it. And their cameras, they're, they're too, too jiggly and they can't, uh, they can't uh, get a, a good view on what's going on. So, yeah. Uh, let's see here. What's going on here? Um, I can't figure out what the Angel Martinez is trying to tell me. Uh, let's see. I like the Turtle Farm. Enjoy the inside room. Thumbs ups here. Great channel. Uh, Sherman Mercer. Thanks, Kathy Butler. We will. This message is held for review. Uh, so something has been said. Uh, Kathy Butler. Does anyone's side of the ship normally get better port views? Does anyone's side of the ship get better port views? Um... Got me thinking now. Uh, you know, I, I can't answer that question. It depends on the port you're at. Um, there are times where you're at a port and all you're looking at are containers because the port doubles as a container a shipping center because it's a smaller island or smaller uh, port. And other times you're looking out over the open water from, you know, from where you came from. So I um, can't tell you that unless you know the exact itinerary but uh I, I i can't tell you what where in the pier the ship is going to end up so i i can't tell you uh let's see here uh what do we got here uh angel not nice to say oh oh angel saying something nasty uh bruce delete angel martinez uh angel's bad okay angel maybe we can get rid of it <laughs> sorry angel or or maybe i'm not sorry i you know i'm just saying maybe angel's got to go um let's see uh, we'll remove Angel. There you go. Angel's gone, hopefully. Um, anyway, uh, let's see here what we have. Uh, we haven't had a bad one for a while, have we, folks? It's been a few weeks, uh, maybe three weeks since I've had one I've had to remove. Uh, anyway, uh, Kathy Butler uh, asked me that. Angel's gone. Uh, cursing is bad. Oh, thank you. Uh, Angel's been blocked. No good. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, port side always has port views. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Thanks, Sherman. <laughs> Good one. 
Oh my, what do we got here? 53 folks are watching right now, it says. 44 pluses, one negative. We got 45 uh, things. I see my uh, my uh, face is frozen. Oh, I must have frozen my own face on my own little feed here. That's okay. And I'm back on. Okay, now let me talk to you folks about something else I was going to bring up today. Uh, Norwegian cruise lines. I got some uh, little tidbit of news for you. It has nothing to do with the cruise ships as far as going on a cruise. It's a corporate thing, a little corporate news. Being, being from the investment uh, community, uh, of the investment ilk that I was from, uh, this kind of caught my eye. I noticed today that uh, the Apollo Group, the, the Apollo Group is an investment banking group. They're private investors. Uh, Apollo um, Management, I think is what they're actually called, they uh, bought uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines back uh, quite a number of years ago from a company called the Star Group. The Star Group at one point owned uh, Norwegian, and Norwegian was having trouble. It just wasn't working out very well. Ships were old and tired. Uh, they were losing money, and they needed refurbishment, and they needed new ships because Carnival had, had their act together. Royal Caribbean was quickly getting their act together, and they were kicking Norwegian's butt. And um, uh, Apollo dropped a huge bunch of money, I think $700 million into uh, Norwegian when it was uh, not doing too well. And they ended up with a good chunk of the company. Uh, I'm going to say uh, maybe half or more than half. And uh, Star Group had a smaller percentage. And um, uh, the two of them, uh, um, I don't know if the two of them both put money, added, added money in, but I know Apollo did. And they got the line turned around, brought in new management and uh, ordered new ships and got it going. Uh, this is quite a number of years ago, maybe 10, 12 years ago. Anyway, uh, then they took the company public four or five years ago. And uh, by doing that, uh, Apollo and uh, Star Group uh, lowered their ownership again because they diluted the number of shares outstanding to new investors. Additional cash came into the company, and that allowed uh, Norwegian to keep expanding, which it's been doing, as we've been noticing. Uh, anyway, the two entities are now selling 10, uh, 20 million shares that they own in Norwegian uh, to the uh, to, uh, investors uh, through, I think, Goldman Sachs. and. Uh, I did some rough math today. I calculate that the 20 million shares that they're going to sell will bring in about one to $1.2 billion. None of that cash goes to the company. These are shares that are held by these two investment entities, but it'll bring them down to a smaller slice of ownership, which is their long-term plan anyway, because the company is now run by management. It's a publicly traded corporation. Mutual funds and investment funds own a lot of the shares of this company. But these two entities are taking the cash off the table now after all these years of building the company up and getting it up and running properly and having it be profitable. So each of these entities will get 500 million to 600 million each, less some fees to the broker to, play, to do this private placement. <clears throat> so that caught my eye today. A little financial news on uh, Norwegian. Another uh, news story I came across today had to do with uh, the Viking cruise lines. Uh, Viking owns um, uh, cruise uh, uh, river cruise ships in Europe and in China. And then Viking also has ocean liners uh, at sea. Their cruises are, uh, their cruise ships only hold 930 passengers, 650 odd crew, um, no one under 18 allowed. Uh, very nice. I've heard nothing but good things. Nothing but good things about uh, Viking, unless you're looking for action. If you're looking for an action cruise, you're not going to like Viking because that's not what they're about. Average age, upwards of 65. Average age of cruisers because minimum age is 18. They have just raised 975 million bucks on a private placement by issuing bonds. They're paying interest of five to 5.8 percent for the money. They used those net proceeds, so probably 950 million they got net out of there. They used that 950 to pay off three outstanding loans. They've now paid off the loans on the Viking Star, the Viking Sky, and then they they basically said they repurchased the Viking Sea. They had purchased the Viking Sea originally, sold the Viking Sea to a corporation, and turned around and rented it back or leased it back. It's called a sale leaseback arrangement. And now the uh, leaseback deal is expiring. It might have been a 10 year deal, five year deal. And at the end of that deal, they can buy the, the ship at a set price. And that is what they're doing with some of these proceeds that they've raised here. So, likely, what's happened is instead of paying out upwards of 50, 60 million a month in expenses, in, in loans and lease payments for these three ships, 
they've turned around and raised $975 million, paid all these three loans off in one shot, own the ships outright, use those three ships as collateral for the $975 million loan they just put together on this bond deal. And now they have just one payment. And this bond payment would, would not be surprising to me if this is a 10, 15 year deal and um, they'll pay this off over 15 or maybe even 20 years. And uh, it's at a probably a lower rate. And that's probably what they've done here, uh, reorganizing their finances. I also found out that Viking, it's based in Basel, Switzerland, a private company. And that 20% of the company is owned by two entities. One is called the TPG Group or Capital Group out of Houston, Texas. And the other half is owned by the Canada Pension Plan. The Government of Canada Pension Plan owns, uh, with the other corporation, TPG, 20% of Viking Ocean Cruises. Wouldn't surprise me that the $975 million came from the two pension funds or from the two entities. They probably coughed up the cash. And they're turning around and they're getting five odd five and a half percent of their money. Now, are you getting five and a half percent from your savings account at your bank? I'm not. <laughs> These guys are. So the Canada Pension Plan is doing well, uh, bringing in a lovely return for its citizenry <laughs> who are drawing pension uh, from the government of Canada. Pretty interesting. Uh, so that was some of the news I, I picked up today uh, that I thought I'd mention to you guys uh, and uh, pass on. Interesting stuff at sea. Always something interesting going on at sea. It's quite something. Uh, let's see. We've got some questions coming here. got some comments going through. So let me just kind of quickly whip back here to uh, uh, where we left off because my viewers who cannot see these uh, comments now will know what we are talking about. Um, Ernest Gringo is saying, we went on Rotan Honduras. Went to Rotan Honduras. It was wonderful. I really want everyone to go there. It was great. Uh, Sharon is saying, love Honduras. Christine, Ernest, did you go via cruise to Honduras? And Ernest is saying, yep, did. Uh, Kathy is saying, I love the beautiful hull on uh, the hull art on the Norwegian ships. And they're kind of known for that, aren't they? They've really gone to town on that. Uh, Christine saying, me too, Kathy. Uh, Ernest is saying, I bought a leather hat for 20 bucks <laughs> in in Honduras. Sharon at sea, um, LFK is paradise. Uh, also, uh, real deal Roatan tours is great. Good advice there, folks. Uh, Ernest Gringo, we took a private, uh, we took a private uh, tour with some others on the ship and made me captain of the tour. Ha <laughs> ha. Peter Heckema, Bruce, how many shares do you have in a cruise line to get a discount of fare? Oh, how many shares do you have to have? If you want to get a shareholder discount, uh, either on Norwegian, Royal Caribbean, or a Carnival, 100 shares. That's called a board lot in the brokerage business. 100 shares or more qualifies you for a shareholder discount on any cruise on any of the lines that they own and operate, and unlimited per year. Um, Ernest Gringo, ah, Peter, low blow, man. <laughs> Scott Batchelor, you need 100 shares. Christine, that's a legit question. Sharon at sea, most cruise line, it's 100. You don't always get a discount, but you get onboard credit with every cruise. Yep, 100, 100 bucks for a seven-day cruise. You can get up to $250 uh, uh, credit, onboard credit, uh, depending on the length, uh, 15 days or longer, 14 days or longer. Shorter cruises, it's like 10 bucks a day. So if you have a five-day cruise, it might be a $50 onboard credit on top of the other credits that are offered. Good deal. Um, <laughs> let's see, uh, Ernest Gringo, come on, guys, really, all, are you going that way against Bruce? I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Steve Bartley, you don't get a discounted fare. You get it on onboard credit. Yeah, onboard credit. Uh, Peter, uh, Ernest, I, I meant how many, how, how many shares does one have to buy to get a discount? 100. Christine, what do you mean, Ernest? He's not insulting. Bruce, uh, oh, oh, sorry, sis. <laughs> misunderstanding <laughs> i don't care anyway it doesn't matter um all is good uh what do we got now 46 likes one dislike 48 watching fantastic numbers i am i'm amazed with these live streams i'll watch the analytics later and i'll be on for an hour hour and 10 minutes and uh it'll tell, it'll show me on the analytics you still had 45 viewers towards the end of the video no one no one leaves we're having too much fun i guess which i i really appreciate i hope you are i hope you're finding these interesting i hope you're finding these uh, useful I am. I'm finding the questions I get from you guys to be very inspirational. Uh, what are your thoughts on? Uh, should I write an ebook? Uh, so one of a couple of my su subscribers or viewers are saying, uh, "Brucey boy, you should write a book and you should market that book through your uh, YouTube site and on a website, which I have yet to create. By the way, it's another one of my things to do on my to-do list. 
uh, should I do an ebook for new cruisers? And I, I think I'm going to. I'm kind of curious what your thoughts are. Uh, what should I sell it for? How much should someone should I charge for something like that? I was thinking if I offered the first chapter as a freebie, as an enticement, an inducement to to anyone who wanted it, I would offer a chapter for free on the book, and then the remainder of the book is uh, downloadable into your uh, email, uh, onto your Kindle, or to whatever device you want it to be downloaded to. And that way you've got a, a, a book about, uh, you know, what to do about going on a cruise. All the tips that I've been giving out uh, that have come across, um, you know, this video, these videos in the past. Kind of curious what your thoughts are on that. Uh, kind of wondering, uh, you think it's a good idea? Should I charge nine ninety nine for the for the book? Um, and it's just an it's just an email. Uh, everyone will get the 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 book instantaneously when they order it. Uh, no mailing to worry about. No printing machines to worry about. Uh, you know, nothing like that. I'm kind of curious. And if things change, I can always update the book uh, as the book needs updating to stay current. Uh, kind of like a Tesla. You know, you buy a Tesla and you get the software update in your car from the factory. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I wish all cars had that. Anyway, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Uh, should I do a um, should I do an ebook for uh, new cruisers? Uh, is that a good idea or not? Uh, love to know what your thoughts are. Um, I, I like a lot of the idea of it. A bit of work. I'm going to have to do a bit of work on it. But um, uh, I think that between myself and uh, and a few uh, contacts I have, maybe I can put one together that uh, is, uh, you know, uh, spells right, <laughs> has good words, <laughs> easy to understand, uh, that type of thing. Uh, who knows? Anyway, I'd like to know. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Christine, absolutely. Uh, Kathy Butler saying we need to send Bruce's wife flowers. We take up uh, a whole two night with live streams unless she's glad for a break. Let me tell you, last night, she went, she went, excuse me, last night I went on uh, my eight o'clock show. She went out for beers with a girlfriend. <laughs> Didn't miss me at all. <laughs> You, you go have fun with your little live stream. I'm going to have friends with my friends. I'm going to have some beer with my friends. See you later. Bye. So uh, I did, didn't kill her last night. We'll find out about it tomorrow night. I'll tell you this much. If the NFL were on right now and the Steelers were playing, I wouldn't be doing live streams in the living room. Oh, no. Oh, then again, I might be doing them in the living room, and she'd be in the bedroom watching the game on the other channel because she's a Steeler fan, and uh, nothing stops the Steelers from getting on. Uh, I'll tell you that right now. So. <laughs> Uh, Ernest saying, uh, well, good night, guys. Time for dinner. See you, Ernest. Uh, Scott Batchley, you were entertaining and love your laugh. Thank you, Scott. Uh, Kathy Butler, my typos kill me. Uh, <laughs> good night, Ernest. Everyone saying goodbye to Ernest. Uh, Mike Hamilton's just joining. Hi, Bruce. 60's here. Hey, Mike, how you doing, buddy? Just catching up. Uh, just asking questions of my viewers. Should I write an ebook for new cruisers? Should I do an ebook uh, for, uh, you know, tips for new cruisers? Um, Send it out uh, by uh, electronically with a you know once a, uh, a payment has been made. Kind of curious whether I should do that. A couple of people think I should. I'm kind of curious whether I would do that or not. Um, there's a lot of lot of stuff to learn for new cruisers, aren't there? I mean, my goodness, what you have to know before you get on the ship, what you're allowed to bring on the ship, what you shouldn't bring on the ship. Uh, some of the best tips you guys have ever given me for for what to bring on a ship. Uh, you know, uh, for holding your towels down on the uh, on the uh, on the decks with those big clippers, uh, big power bars, uh, so you can plug in a bunch of you know electronics at the same time. All kinds of great tips, and uh, I think that that might be a good ebook. Um, uh, <laughs> Mike Hamilton sees Pamela saying, uh, "Pamela Jordan, you should show us a picture of your wife." Uh, you know, I, I'm going to ask her about that, and uh, we'll see if she tells me to use like a picture of Jennifer Aniston or something like that. Uh, maybe we'll do something like that. <laughs> Uh, she may she may not go for it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, Kathy Butler, I'm out too. I know your ebook would be great. Kathy Butler, good night. See you, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, Christine Singh, night cake. Debbie Manuel, ebook would be great, but does that mean less live events? Uh, no, no, <laughs> doesn't mean less live events. It just means that I'll have an ebook to add on to my income stream, and uh, hopefully, I can sell enough of them uh, through my uh, Twitter account, my uh, my Instagram work, Facebook work, uh, this channel. Uh, my website eventually, maybe that'll be a way to to do that. Uh, Kathy Butler, an ebook should be easy to update since rules constantly change. That's what I was thinking. Sylvan, off-topic question uh, here, please. Is that a um, a geode behind your left shoulder by your speaker? Is that a is that a geode? Are you talking about this thing right here? This? Are you talking about that? Is that what you call it? 
take a look here. Oh, let me show you what this is. Okay, this is the front of it right here. I think this is what you're talking about. I hope that's what you mean. I'll put that in the light, and then I'll, I'll bring it around like this, and bring it around like that, and it's kind of shiny there. You know? And then here it is like this on the top, and then this is what it is like on the bottom, and that's what it looks like. And I uh, I don't know what that is. You know, it's a pretty rock that my wife got somewhere one time, and it sits here all the time. And it's a turquoise blue color. Uh, sorry about the lighting, you know, cheap video, cheap YouTuber, you know. Uh, unmonetized he hasn't got the money for lighting uh, anyway there you are um i don't know is that what you think it is I, I don't know what that is um i have no idea where i got it from uh, where she got it from how long we've had it no idea uh over here you're, you're not talking about no you're not talking about that so no <laughs> sorry so i wish i could be more specific uh judy anst is saying 13 dollars for the uh for the downloads uh 10 bucks See, Ju Ju Judy mentioned this to me. Ju Judy, welcome. Uh, Samantha saying, what, what cruise line would be the cheapest for 100 rooms of full-time cruising? Uh, I like Royal Caribbean because the ship is the destination. Hmm. Uh, yeah, good question, Samantha. That really is a good question. You know, I, I can't answer off the top of my head because I'm not in this business. I'm not in the, uh, in the business of booking 100 rooms at a time or even inquiring. Uh, this is something that... Uh, that uh, you know, might be hard to do uh, on on in some cruise lines cases because um, a number of ships are are booked at ninety eight ninety nine percent with three months to go already, uh, and or are um, uh, the cruise line will hold that they'll won't offer one hundred rooms at a discount price uh, because they don't have to like they're they're in that kind of luxury position where they can just say well. Uh, sorry, uh, ma'am, but you know we're not going to offer 100 rooms at a discount because we get top dollar through our travel agents networks out there, and uh, you know we're we're good. Um, on the other hand, depending on the ship, uh, uh, the age of the ship, and the amenities, if you're looking for like a, a Royal Caribbean um, Harmony of the Seas, you want to book 100 rooms for say six solid months in a row, or three solid months in a row, or or a year, they might talk to you about it. But they may not be able to offer it to you until 2020, uh, and then they're going to want a sizable deposit uh, right now um, before they take those cruise cabins off the market and hold them for you. Uh, you're prepaying. Um, it might be that severe. So I don't know if it's doable uh, on these kinds of things. Just, just these are just thoughts coming to me as I'm winging it. Uh, but that's how I would be acting if I were a cruise operator, knowing I've got. 98 to 99 to 100 percent capacity now if i'm booked i'm booked and if i got the harmony of the seas i got the symphony of the seas i'm sold out uh, there won't be empty cabins the only way there'll be an empty cabin if someone gets lost from the airport to the ship or their plane got canceled and they're stuck in cincinnati they missed their connection to miami couldn't get there in time and a, and a cabin goes empty but it's paid for and they got the money so that might be it um Charlie, uh, yep, geode. Oh, thank you, Christine. Sorry, yep, geode. Sylvan saying, yep, a geode. I collect rocks. Ah, uh, uh, Sylvan, you're also an expert at rocks uh, in your glass, uh, but those are temporary rocks. I understand they don't they don't last all that long. <laughs> those are the good. Those are also good kind of rocks too. <laughs> uh, Judy, ten dollars if they're subscribed. If it's a geode, it is a geode. Thank you, uh, Stephen Ducar. Hi from Denton, 66 Fahrenheit today. Hey, Stephen, welcome back. Karen at sea, probably Carnival would be the cheapest for 100 cabins. You get onboard credit with groups and more perks. Royal would cost more. Yeah, it would. And uh, like I say, uh, you know, uh, you, you might get a discount, but for how long um, can you book it? Is the ship uh, pre-booked for uh, uh, an entire week uh, for a theme cruise and the ship is offline? Or did a corporation book that one particular ship uh, three months from now for a convention of 5,000 employees. Uh, there's that. Um, so you may or may not be able to book a consecutive long, long-term commitment. But then again, you might be able to book a month here and a month on this ship and a month on that ship. And a, you never know. You got to call. This is a phone call you have to make to marketing directors uh, and leave a message and talk to them about that. But they're gonna they're gonna want serious references. They're going to want letters of credit from banks that uh, you're talking about 100 cabins. Uh, they want to know even before they quote you a deal, who are you and how solid is your money? That 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 
not to be rude about it, but that's how they're going to react. Uh, they're 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 not going to want to be going through a whole bunch of work for someone who's just kind of kicking the tires. So they're going to want to see someone serious. Uh, anyway, just mentioned Samantha Farmer does not have to be one ship. We can change ships. Yep, yeah, like I say, if you're able to do that for sure. Um, Skyhawk 1987 Turbos here. I I'm really late, but hi everyone. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Welcome back. Uh, hey, Skyhawk. Nice to have you here. 418. Yeah, I'm uh, uh, 618 Eastern, and uh, uh, this is my only video today. If I was doing another show at 8, I'd be cutting you guys off now, but I'm not on later, so I can talk a little longer. Uh, hey, Christine, he said, what's your temperature today, Skyhawk? Where are you at? Oh, how warm are you? Sharon at Sea. Samantha Farmer, message me. I can help you. There you go. Sharon at Sea. She, she might be able to help you. Uh, she's, a, she's a travel agent. She might be able to help you. Uh, you never know. So, uh, what the heck? Yeah, what's your temperature out there today, Skyhawk? Uh, are you warm? I think it's warm north of you, so you should be in pretty good weather down there. Uh, be all right. Uh, what do we got going here? 40, uh, 50, we got 50 thumbs ups. Thanks, everybody. Two thumbs downs. Uh, what can I say? Uh, 50 and two is 52. That's 52 uh, engagements on the uh, analytics. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Anybody want to give me a thumbs up that hasn't? Please do. That'd be wonderful. Um, Skyhawk, uh, 56 in rain, Charlotte, North Carolina. Too bad uh, for that. But, uh, yeah, it was warm uh, warm up in Michigan today. Warm. 70, I thought I heard. Fantastic. Very good weather. Anyway, so we covered a few topics today. I've got some more news for you guys tomorrow already. I've already got some topics lined up. i got to get a lot of material tomorrow. I'm doing two shows. Tomorrow at uh, 5 Eastern, 8 Eastern, and Friday at 5, Saturday at 2. Then next week, Monday to Friday at 5 o'clock uh, Eastern, as always. And, of course, Tuesdays, Thursdays, the second show, 8 o'clock Eastern. I'm kicking in. Thanks for uh, everybody's super chat today. I think I got a couple today. Thank you very much for the super chat uh, donations. I really appreciate it. Still demonetized. Uh, for those of you who are just joining late, not knowing, uh, we're waiting for uh, approval. Don't know how long it'll take. We're in review. I think there's a million channels in review. And we're all just starving out here waiting to see what happens. People are starting to say their good nights, and uh, they're getting a the hint that I'm getting ready to go. Uh, I hope you've had a good one today, folks. I've enjoyed today's show. It's been great. Uh, uh, um, uh, Sharon at Sea, thanks for coming by. Uh, it was great to have you here. Uh, I know you're. Uh, I know you're a, um, a YouTuber. Uh, Sharon at Sea has uh, 1,439 subscribers, and uh, you may want to check her out. Uh, she uh, she does videos all the time, and it's great that you're here, Sharon. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, appreciate all of you guys here today uh, who are joining me. Uh, great comments, great questions, and uh, really had fun today. Um, so I'm going to say my good nights, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 5, and then get ready for tomorrow at 8. So today, thanks again. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me today, and we'll catch you tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern time. Have a great evening, everybody. Take it easy. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Good night.